Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to, wow, what are we up to? 109, Cute Tutorial 109. Um, before we get into it, be sure to visit my website, voidrealms.com. Um, I've got all the tutorials and most of the source code. You can help out if you're watching one of these tutorials and the source code is missing. Well, I was on a server, the server crashed, the company I was paying never took a backup, so some of the files are now missing. So if you're watching along and you're doing one of these tutorials, like let's say we're just doing uh, uh, any of these, and you notice the source is missing, go ahead, type it out, zip it up, and I'll review it. And if it looks legit, I'll post it up here for everybody else. All right, let's dive right in here. I'm gonna go new. And we're gonna say enums. The power of enums. What are enums? Well, enums are enumerations. So we're going to add a new class here. I'm just going to call this test. We're going to inherit queue object. Now, we're going to break apart from the standard enum tutorial. I mean, everybody at this point should know what enumeration is. If you don't, well, go read a C++ book. Actually, I think I have a C++ tutorial on that. All right, so include. And we're going to include q meta enum. What in the world is that? Well, Qt's gone a long way to add um, metadata. What is metadata? Metadata is data about data. For example, a string. Well, how do you know what a q string really is? Well, a q string is a wrapper for blah blah blah. You understand that, but q meta enum actually allows that to happen adds a bit of, if you're a Java programmer, reflection, or .NET programmers probably know that term too. So, we're going to add a macro in here, and we're going to call it qenums, whoops, I if I actually spell it right, and we need to give it a parameter. So, our parameter is actually going to be an enumeration. We're going to call it uh, tester, uh, we'll call it tests. Now we need to actually make our num. Now, if you remember from all your little C++ classes that we've been taking over the years here, uh, an enumeration is quite simply just a list of things. So we're going to say test1, actually let's do all caps, test1, test2, test three. So we've got three different enum items here. Now we need to actually make something happen. We'll call it do test q string um, command. So we're just going to make a simple slot. We're going to define that. Now what's going to happen is someone somewhere out there is going to take our class and they're going to throw a string at us. We're going to actually switch on that string. That's right, the switch command. Now, anybody watching this is going to go, whoa, hold the phone. You can't switch on a string in C++. Well, that's true, to a degree. That's why the Q meta enum is out there. So what we're going to do first is we have to actually get that metadata. So we're going to say Q meta object, and we're just going to call it uh, meta object. Yeah, real, real classy there. And we're going to say this static meta object. So what we're doing is we're getting the meta information about this object. So we're getting information about it, or data about data. Now we're going to get the meta enum enumerator, and we're going to call this qmeta, eh. qmeta enum, I'm going to call it meta enum, and this is going to be the meta object. and we're going to get the enumerator. So we're getting data about data and we're getting the enumerator and we're going to say meta object index of 
enumerator. There it is. So we're getting the index of the enumerator. And notice how it's taking a const care pointer to name. So it's getting a constant care. So what we're going to give it, of course, is, well, the name of our enumerator, which was, if I remember right, we called it tests. Let's jump back here. Yep, tests. So what's going on? What, what are we really doing? This is all confusing. All right, let's jump back into the code here. We're getting the, let me end that correctly. We have our class. When the class is first loaded, or compiled, I should say, we're building metadata about it. We're saying qenums, which is a macro, and we're calling our enum of tests. So we're saying build meta information about this enum. This enum has three items in it. Don't get hung up on this just yet. We have a slot. In that slot, we're saying get the meta object, this static meta object. So we're getting data about this object. And then we're getting the meta enumerator, meaning we're getting that enumerator. Now, it seems all confusing, but I promise you it's really not that bad once we get down to the nitty gritty of it. Really all you need to understand at this point is that we're getting data about data and that we're going to get data about our index of a numerator which is tests our num object Whew, that's a mouthful if it sounds confusing and complex it's because it is confusing and complex but we're gonna make it simple so now all we want to do is we want to be able to switch so let's actually add in our trusty old oops include QDebug and we're going to actually switch on this so we're going to say <laughs> you guessed it meta enum keys to value is what we want and you notice how that returns an int that's how we're able to switch this because C++ cannot switch on a Q string or even a Q meta enum it needs an integer so we're going to actually convert that string into an index. So we're going to do keys to value, and we're going to say command to Latin 1. Why? Because it wants a, I haven't actually tested that, we probably could just pass a Q string, but it wants a plain old boring C++ type string. So we're going to say case, and there's our enums. We're going to say QDebug. Okay, kitty. I'm telling you, every tutorial, this cat is right here. We'll say do something for test one. And we're going to do our break. And we're just going to do this for each one of these enum items. We had one, two, and three. And then it's always good to, when you're working with these, to do the default. And we're just going to say unknown command. Oopsie. I'm trying to type while my cat's nuzzling up against my arm. Let's fix these up a little bit. Two and two, three and three. Whew, all right. That's quite a lot of work that we were doing here. All right, let's go into here. Say include. Ah. We're going to include our test class. Say test. test do test and we're going to give it our q string so we can say q string and we're just going to give it invalid data we're going to compile this and sure enough we got our default unknown command so we can tell the program's actually working here now we're going to say test1. 
You can see, once again, unknown command, because, of course, C++ is case sensitive. So if we actually do the uppercase, run this again, do something for task one. So now if you were writing a program and the user enters some input and you want to switch on it, you know how to handle that. Now, a real easy way around this whole case sensitivity, of course, is just to go in here and say, whoopsie, two upper, two Latin one. And then it simply won't matter. See, do something for test one, ta-da. So let's recap real quick, because this can be kind of a confusing topic. First off, why do you need this? Well, it makes life a little simpler. Um, people use enums for case, you know. You get in the car, do you drive to A, the store, B, the movie theater, C, somewhere else. So it makes life easier when you're doing conditional statements, a.k.a. you're using a switch. Well, if you're working with strings, you cannot switch on a string. Therefore, you've got to use QAnums to gather the meta, or I should say create metadata about this enum. Then you can actually retrieve metadata from the static meta object and then get the index of the enumerator and then switch on that as it were an integer. Neat, huh? Well, that's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. I look forward to your feedback.